Hello and welcome to our post Oscars breakdown, post mortem, whatever you want to call it. I'm Christopher Lloyd. I'm joined here, of course, by Alec Toombs. Hello. So let's talk about what everyone's talking about because uh, there's no other way to explain it. Uh, in all of your uh, what's going to happen at the Oscars pools, I don't think uh, anyone had an MMA match breaking out in one of them. So uh, I'll, I'll just ask you, what was your reaction to that whole whole, whole moment and the, the how it's shaping up the reaction to it? I'll be honest. I was running a little bit behind on the show, and uh, some buddies of mine who are also big movie fans were were blowing me up. And I'm like, they weren't specific about it. Just uh, you know, not really approving of Will Smith's behavior. And they said Team Rock in the message. I'm like, okay, let's see what let's see what happens here. Um, I get why Will Smith that did what he did. If I were in his shoes, I might have done the same thing. Uh, doesn't mean it's right. He probably should have been escorted from the building. In all honesty, he did commit assault. Um, I, I got to give Chris Rock props for being a consummate professional and continuing onward. I'm not sure I could have done the same if I were in his shoes. Yeah. Um, I, I think what he did was wrong. I, I, I think he knew immediately what he did was wrong, but uh, he was so angry. And as, as I've noted on Twitter, you know, you can look at the video. Will Smith himself was laughing at the G.I. Jane joke. That's um, true. And Jada obviously was, was scowling and not having it. And that, that was right at the point where they cut away. My guess is what happened is he looked at her, saw how hurt she was, and was ashamed for himself because he was laughing, and translated that into, I need to direct my anger somewhere. So as, I, as, as a husband, I, I can understand that. But, you know, he's 53 years old. Sure. You're lo long past the age of knowing that you don't act out in that thing. And talk about privilege the privilege of knowing that he could go up there and do that and not only would he not be escorted from the building not be arrested would still win the oscar and be able to give this sort of half apology where he apologizes to everyone except for the person he actually it uh talked he definitely about. should have apologized to chris rock during his speech yeah. I, if i were him i certainly wouldn't i was not buying his speech particularly like you know you know god is calling me to be a river to my people and love and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, holy crap. Especially, you know, he was stealing Anthony Quinn's speech from Lawrence of Arabia. I'm, a, I'm poor because I'm a river to my people. I was like, get out of here. But still, you know, I mean, he's a great actor and he was emo emotionally pulling it off. I thought, I was like, if he, and I saw where he's like, I want to apologize to the Academy. I want to apologize to my fellow nominees. And he paused right there. And I was like, just say it. And I want to apologize to Chris. And I was like, okay, if he'd done that, he could have pulled it off. He could have landed the triple axle and actually come out of this looking okay, but he didn't. And he probably should have also apologized to Questlove, who made a very thoughtful yeah. documentary and, and, and gave a very thoughtful acceptance speech after the crazy. Yeah. Said Honestly, that was, that was, I was like, of all the people there, I didn't feel bad for. Chris Rock even or even Jada or anybody only person I felt bad for was Questlove because he had his it was like a repeat of the Moonlight moment from a few years ago where he had his golden moment in the sun and somebody else ruined it for him so I felt bad one other thing I will say people are of course now jumping up to defend Will Smith uh saying like you shouldn't joke about people's medical conditions and blah 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 I'll just say this as people are like, like Chris Rock, Rock made a tasteless tasteless joke and you can decide whether or not it was in good taste it was not, I'm betting, it was not Chris Rock's joke. All the lines, all the jokes, all the, you know, spontaneous banter you see on the Oscars is heavily scripted. There's literally a team of writers coming up with that stuff. So sitting here right now, you know, uh, 12 hours later or whatever, I seriously doubt that that was like a riff that Chris Rock just came up with. It wouldn't so, shock me. Well, Rock is pretty quick. I think he's one of our better working comedians. Uh, I thought the joke was funny, but it's undoubtedly tasteless. Yeah, but I mean, there, there was a line earlier that in the evening where Amy Schumer made a joke about Jennifer Lawrence's weight. And I was like, and that was not funny, and that was tasteless, and it was like, is she going to go somewhere else with that? Like, make a joke of the fact that she made a tasteless joke? I don't know, but all I can say, that is a moment we will not soon forget but yeah let's let's talk about the actual awards um i did okay i did count it up i think i got 18 out of 23 predictions right 
Um, felt pretty good about them overall. Um, I was expecting, I did at the last minute change my prediction on Coda to win Best Picture. And I can see it. People are like, it's a lovely movie that I make my top 10, but it's a lovely film. It's a feel good movie. And people are like, is it the most am artistically ambitious, daring, original movie out there? No, it isn't. But I understand why it the may, Academy voters voted for it. Maybe the most heartfelt movie of, of our choices. And uh, I think that's what a lot of people in this country need right now. Yeah, exactly. I think it's, it's literally like we've had two years of this, you know, political, COVID, turmoil, war. Everyone is, you know, just been eating anxiety daily for two years. And yeah, they just wanted to celebrate a movie that's like, hey, you know, love, acceptance, feeling good about yourself and others versus, you know, Power of the Dog. I liked it a lot. It did not make my top 10. It's a good movie. It's a flawed movie. It's a challenging movie. It's very much a movie that is not comforting, that, you know, puts difficult things in your face, makes you, you know, it, it makes you swallow some bitter poison and sort of have to think, sit with it and think about it. Um, so I understand why it did not end up uh, doing well. In fact, 12 nominations, only won one award for Jane Campion for Best Director, which I did love that. Um, I do think of all the, the films there, it best represented a, a director's singular vision and she's been doing fantastic work for decades. And I think it was sort of like Kenneth Branagh's win for Belfast. It wasn't necessarily, this was the best movie and this was your best work ever. It was more like a career capper. We want to recognize you for a career. So what was your I was happy for I was happy for both of them. They wouldn't have been my choices in the category, but both were good films. Um, it is cool to see another wo woman win a Best Director Oscar. Uh, she's only the third woman to ever do it. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing more women uh, win the award in the future. Yeah, in terms of like diversity of the Oscars, the Best Director Oscar Award is really the best one. I, I, I've, I've been keeping a tabs. I, I didn't look it up before our podcast, but I think it's like going back 13 or 14 years, I think a white male has only won the award for Best Director once or twice in that period. Um, it's almost always gone to, uh, or I should say, a white, white male, uh, a white straight male. I think we, if you include a gay, gay act, gay director who won it, um, it's uh, it's been very diverse. We've had three women now in the last fourteen years since Hurt Locker. Um, we've had directors of color. Um, we've had uh, LGBTQ um, directors. So. That's one area um, where it was not a terribly diverse night for the winners. Um, I think women only won like 23% of the awards, someone said. Um, at least that's some, something good we can look at. Um, sure. and I, I, I thought Kipping did deserve it. Who would you, in those two categories, who would you have given it to instead because you said it would not be your first choice? Uh, for best, or, or best original screenplay? Or uh, director, yeah. For original screenplay, my choice would have been The Worst Person in the World, which I just watched for the first time yesterday and was pretty blown away by it. Yeah. Um, that was a great film. Uh, director, uh, probably, I don't remember the, the cat's name, the gentleman who directed Drive My Car, which I also recently watched for the first time and thought was outstanding. Yeah, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't want to attempt to, to butcher his name. Uh, yeah, I expected that one to win in uh, Best International Feature. I did expect, uh, I did not expect Summer of Soul, even though it was my pick to win Best Documentary, just because people would say, I probably fooled myself there, you know, because I would say, like, it's not a substantial enough movie, it's not as important, like, Attica, um, or Writing with Fire, uh, which, you know, real social commentary documentaries, but again, it was a really feel-good movie, you know, you walk out of there tapping your toe and humming and feeling good. Um, and I, I think it's probably why Summer of Soul won that as well. People just wanted to like, hey, uplift, uplifting movies are okay and it's okay to, to acknowledge them. I would argue, though, it had something important to say. I mean, it was very much about representation and uh, I think that matters. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I think what made that, that movie, I've, I've seen the movie dismissed as being, it just had really good fit it, footage. It had all this archival footage and the movie with the best footage wins. I don't really buy that because I, I think they sort of started with that and then all the contemporaneous interviews and the historical uh, context was what really made it work. Yeah, I don't want to dismiss it as an insubstantial movie, but it definitely is a more feel-good movie than, say, Attica, which is what I thought would win. 
Well, I haven't seen Attica. The only documentaries I'd seen were Summer of Soul and Flea, both of which I thought were quite good. Yeah, and it's interesting. People catching up. Even I caught up uh, on movies right, you know, right up to the wire. I saw uh, Four Good Days right before the Oscars because it was nominated for a song. So I guess technically I could have just heard the song, but it's a what, challenge. What, I what is that movie? Like it's, my, it's my a, wife was asking me, she's like, "What is this?" I'm like, "I'm not really sure." But yeah, cool, I actually got a, I actually got a DVD screener for it like back in November. I just didn't get to it. It wasn't getting any awards chatter, and therefore a lot of people just didn't watch it. Um, it's actually really good. Uh, it stars Glenn Close and Mila Kunis. Um, okay. and they play a mother and daughter. The daughter is a heroin addict who comes home, and the whole thing is that she has to spend four days de detoxed before she can get treatment with a shot that will like block her from you know the effects of fentanyl or whatever she's taking. Um, I'm remembering so, this movie now. I think I saw yeah. a reviewer. Yeah, over there Glenn for... Close. Not a great movie. Kind of you know, sort of like Coda. It's like you know very. Old, not old fashioned, but very sort of direct movie. You know what's going to happen. It doesn't have any big surprises. It's not artistically daring, but it's very well performed. Glenn Close is just always terrific. Uh, Mila Kunis, who an actress I have not thought much of her thespian skills, I will admit. Um, I thought it had a really solid performance. So, yeah, go check it out. I believe it's on, uh, I can't remember if it's on Hulu. Probably or Hulu Amazon, or Amazon Prime. Prime. I think I want to say it's Hulu. Yeah, I want to say it's Hulu. <laughs> d d definitely worth. We're checking out. Oh, and Coming to America. That was the last movie I caught that I had not seen, uh, nominated for... Uh, makeup. Makeup, yeah. And that was pretty bad. <laughs> I, I reviewed it when it came out uh, like a year ago. I liked it better than it sounds like you did, but uh, certainly doesn't hold a candle to the original. Yeah, um, I think, you know, on the acting awards, we've had this thing the last two or three years where... The acting awards are pretty much set. Um, they, you know, those performers sweep the the preliminary awards and are pretty much the strong favorites going in. And I think it's just like this year, last year, maybe even the year before, all four categories. It was like, yep, we know who's going to win, and yep, they won. And yeah, I mean, Jessica Chastain's I thought it was good. Um, uh, it's interesting. She's really only been on the big you know, A-list Hollywood level on everyone's radar for about 10 years. She didn't even start right. making movies until she was in her 30s. Um, so uh, she's gotten a really great start to her career. And I think it was one of those it's her time kind of awards where it's like, I think she'd been nominated two or three times before, probably should have won for Hurt Locker. Um, and, uh, for uh, Zero Dark Thirty. I'm sorry, Zero Dark Thirty. I always get those confused. Um, Another Catherine Bigelow movie. Yeah, Catherine Bigelow movies, similar topics or settings, yeah. Um, so there was uh, Ariana DeBoss. Again, everyone knew she was going to win. I thought she was really good in the movie, but other than dancing, she only really had that one substantial acting scene. Sure. And my, my take on it was I, I, didn't, I didn't see her do anything with the role that I didn't see Rita Marina do 60 years ago. I did enjoy her speech. I also really enjoyed uh, Troy Kotsur's speech. I found that to probably be the highlight of the evening. And I, I'm going to pick a bone with you here. I do think Coda is a great movie. It's still my favorite movie of last year. I often let my heart steer me. I'm a pretty emotional dude, and it was an emotional movie. But uh, I, I'm very, very pleased with the love that was shown to Coda last night. Yeah, I mean, it did not make my top 10 list, but it probably would have literally been like number 11 or 12 if I, if I, if I, you know, sorted those ones past that. Uh, and I don't, I don't complain about, I don't feel bad about it winning at all. Um, Troy Kotzer, I was really pleased about his win. I thought he deserved it. Um, interesting role there in that, you know, really his role, the dad in that movie, he's kind of like the comedic relief role. He's like, you know, the goofy guy, he's Randy, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then, you know, about midway through the movie, he gets like a, a nice little meaty scene. And they're like, oh, okay, he's doing the, the something more here. And then he has that really good scene with his daughter towards the end that's, I mean, absolutely lump in the throat moment. You talk um, about I'm starting to well up a little bit. Well, I know. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm having like emotional recollection of that scene right now. And that's the mark of great acting and great screenwriting. Uh, that's the other one there. Um, I did not expect Coda to win for screenplay. Um, so uh, that was a surprise moment. But again, I I've noticed with the screenplay awards in particular, the, the voters love, love to do two things. They love to recognize a, a young, new talent 
um, who they know isn't going to win Best Picture or Best Director or other things, but say, hey, here's a screenwriting award. So I think there was that, not knowing that it actually would win the Best Picture. And they also sort of love to, like with Kenneth Branagh, Kenneth Brand, I would say like, hey, you, you, you've been doing a lot of good stuff for a long time. You've never won. Here's an Oscar for you. So sort of a career capper. So that was kind of cool. Bringing it back to Will Smith, I am glad he won. I think he deserved to win. I think he deserved uh, it. Um, he probably shouldn't have been there to accept the award later on, but uh, I thought King Richard was great. I actually had, had hoped that uh, Anjanou Ellis would have won for Best Supporting Actress. I thought she was outstanding in the movie, too. Again, my heart's directing me places, and, and uh, King Richard gave me the feels. Yeah, I don't know. With, with Ellis, my feeling was it, was it was one of those movies where she was very much in the background, and then they live, literally give them the actor like two scenes. Um, to really, you know, have something to gnaw. And I guess you the, could the say... Scene, the scene they used when uh, in the uh, lead-up to the award, when I was watching the movie, I'm like, she's going to get nominated, and this is the scene they're going to use. And they did. I mean, she's... Yeah. It's a great scene. She's great in it. Yeah. I, I mean, I hate to say it. You can see movies like that in a movie where there's, like, a supporting character who's been in the background the whole time, and suddenly they pop up for, like, 90 seconds of this great speech. And it's literally like someone said, let's write them an Oscar speech. It's like, it's, it's a speech that registers as, here's the Oscar clip speech. Um, I remember Ruby D was nominated for American Gangster some years ago. It was the same thing. Where it was like, she's just totally in the background, misused actress. And it's like, boom, here's your 90 second Oscar clip speech. And we're going to get you a nomination out of it. I guess I mean, my take I, on it's a little less cynical than yours. I just thought it was well written and well acted enough where I'm like, this is what they're going to have to use. And I was really impressed by it. Yeah, I just need a little more. I need I, I need more than a, a scene or two from, you know, a, a supporting role to, to to say, hey, let's let's give them a nomination on it. Well, That's let's fair. wrap up. I mean, overall, I thought it was a, a pretty good year for movies. Not a lot of the movies that I really loved got a bunch of nominations. Um, we, I should, we should mention Dune. I, I predicted Dune would come out with the most number of awards, and it did just because from a technical standpoint, you can't argue that it's a, it's a magnificently crafted film. So I'm not really upset. I mean, there weren't any big shocks that had me going like, oh, that was an injustice. How about you? Uh, no, I'm not. I don't think I'm as hot on Dune as you are. Uh, it felt like- half I, I'm not that high on Dune. <laughs> okay. Maybe I, 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 think, I think technically it's a very well done movie. I just think for a storytelling standpoint, it, it, it's lacking. I just think that Denis Villeneuve has, has made much better movies previously. I would take uh, Blade Runner 2049 or Sicario or Prisoners over this any day of the week. Yeah, I would too. But that's the way the Oscars tend to shake out. You know, the it seems very it's very rare that my favorite movie of the year win, wins Best Picture. Um, I so, did this year, so I was pretty stoked. <laughs> good. Well, good for you. And we should mention, Coda, uh, Coda I think, set a couple of records. Um, winning Best Picture with the fewest total number of nominations. Only had three. Um, was the first streaming movie to ever win Best Picture also. Yeah, we should mention that. It, it was really coming down to Netflix or Apple. One of those was going to win. Um, so, yeah, a, a, a new era where streaming movies are no longer the... The, the poor kid sitting at the kids' table, um, they're going to be right there with the studios every step of the way from now on. Um, I, should, I also want to mention Coda went three for three, won everything it was nominated for. So uh, definitely uh, a memorable year for that and some other things that hopefully will, will recede in the memory as time goes on. Do you think uh, Coda will receive uh, a physical uh, release now that's one best picture? It or you might. think they're going to keep it on the platform to, to try to lure subscribers? At, at least for a while. I mean, I think for a few months, at least, they'll keep it on the platform. Who knows? Um, people are talking about that, and it kind of struck me. I actually have DVDs of Power of the Dog and Coda, because those are, they send out to voters and press for a four-year consideration. So there is physical media of those out there, but not on the market that anyone can buy. Uh, I wouldn't advise you putting your for your consideration screener on eBay because they will come for you. I just, I know my folks want to see the movie, but they don't want to subscribe to Apple TV Plus. And I know they would love the movie. So uh, I hope it gets a physical release and more people get the chance to see it because it really is a special film in my opinion. All right. Well, definitely, definitely an Oscar broadcast of highs and lows. Um, 
we thank you for joining us and uh, hopefully next year's Oscars will be a little more loving in, in all sorts of different ways. Thanks for joining me. Thank you.